Never again, ever, in my life will I do this uh, voluntarily. This was a nightmare. Oh, there's not really a trick. It's actually just pure suffering. All right, welcome back to a video that I'm probably gonna regret signing up for, and that is removing old and crusty paint protection film. So this bumper right here has had this PPF on here for, I'm guessing, 15 plus years, if not from the factory itself. So today, we're gonna be removing this old PPF off this front bumper, and we're gonna see what secrets lie underneath the paint protection film. This stuff is really thick and really old, but I'm genuinely curious on how well it did in protecting the paint on the bumper itself. And so, as you can see, it's not perfect by any means. It's got some scratches and gouges and things like that underneath. It's got chips in areas that the PPF isn't. But how about this whole section? How about this whole section? What's it gonna look like? I have no idea. So the game plan on how we're gonna remove this PPF is we're gonna be using a steamer and probably my fingernails. And we're gonna pray that this goes how I think it's going to go. So uh, we're gonna break out our steamer. It does have ONR in it at 256 to one dilution with distilled water. We're gonna basically start heating up an area and start peeling and just keep heating and keep heating and keep peeling. Hopefully there's not gonna be a lot of residue left behind and if there is, we'll come back with some KCX Ulex and knock it down and potentially even polish this just to see if we can get the best finish possible. So uh, yeah, we got work to do, let's jump into it. All right, so with steamer in hand, one quick thing to note, this is probably a heck of a lot easier with the bumper on the car itself. I don't recommend removing PPF with like a flimsy bumper like this. You're not gonna get a good enough pull. You definitely want it clipped in, however, we don't really have that option, so we're just gonna go for it. Now, what I like to do is try to find a corner that already looks like it's gonna be able to lift. So this guy right here, I can already start picking my finger underneath it, and I can see that something's coming up. So I'm gonna take my steamer here. This is the pod steamer. Again, 256 to one with O&R. Get it going. Now, the reason why I like using O&R is because it has that ability to start encapsulating, start breaking things up, and so when I'm removing PPF, it's going to start breaking down that adhesive better than what you think, especially when it's hot. And so we're using a combination of the heat from the steam as well as the lubricity and the cleaning power of the O&R to really help dive in there and get underneath that adhesive. Once we've started working an edge here, I'm gonna start picking it up and pulling. And this is actually, I can't believe it. I've got a good start on this. Let's keep this thing going. Watch your fingers, because this does get hot. So I don't recommend pulling, spraying exactly on your fingers, but you can get pretty close before it gets too hot to handle. And once we can get enough leverage here, get a finger, or get multiple fingers here, we can really start spraying. I can't, but dang it. I was just about to say, I can't believe how easy this is coming. I spoke too soon. Oh, this works, it's just patience is, patience is key. So the trick of this is, um, there's not really a trick, it's actually just pure suffering uh, for several minutes at a time, but you definitely wanna add enough heat. This stuff is old, guys. Like, it's, I'm surprised I'm even able to lift up this much, but I am just dying to see what the paint looks like underneath here. Quick update here, we're about uh, 15, 20 minutes in, and this is my progress. So uh, yeah, I guess you could say it's going pretty good. I've got about, uh, what, what would you say, 8% of this uh, front bumper uh, with PPF removed, and I gotta say though, this PPF did protect it from pretty much everything. Um, I have not seen a rock chip yet, Got a little bit of adhesive left over. I'll come back through again with some Ulex, remove that. But I think, I think this might be pretty good, guys. I'm not just saying that. It's a total pain to remove. 
uh, the method is working, it's just a matter of time. Now, if the film becomes too hot, I'm finding that it's starting to stretch way too much and then it snaps. If the film is too cold, then I'm not able to get enough pull to start getting that adhesive removed. I start leaving a bunch of adhesive left over. So it's that perfect amount of heat that I'm looking for to where it's leaving the film pliable, it's taking the adhesive with it, but it's not getting too hot, it's not getting too cold. And I've been trying to just kind of balance between those two. Uh, would this be faster with two people? Maybe, maybe not, because I'm heating up a section, working it with my fingers, getting it pulled out. On the car, would this be easier? Oh, yes. 100%, absolutely. But I'm getting somewhere. So again, we'll chime in here in another 15, 20 minutes or so. I'm hoping I can get some of this out of here because I think it's gonna be the biggest pain on the lowers because that's gonna be the most chipped area where I think that the film's gonna be really fragile. But up here as well, because of the sun exposure here with the heat and all the cracking that's already formed in the PPF already. So we're gonna keep at this. I think this is the right method so far. Um, I might attempt a heat gun in one section to see if that helps a little bit, but I really think steam is probably gonna be the answer. saw from the montage there, I busted out the heat gun because I wanted to do a comparison to see, does the heat gun actually go any faster than the steamer? And at first, it was going pretty quick, I'm not gonna lie. I heated everything up and I was able to start peeling everything back, but I was able to instantly notice the amount of adhesive left over in comparison to the steam side. The steamer side has a very light dusting of adhesive. That's gonna come off almost immediately. This side over here, it is caked on. And so I can feel the tackiness on my hand here, over here, no tackiness. So the heat gun, it could work, right? In theory, it's just, it could go faster, it could go slower, but I think it's gonna create more work in the long run. But I will continue to work the side with the heat gun a little bit more. And then at the end of this, obviously when we use the Ulex, it's gonna help take all of this off. So it's kind of a trade off, right? With something this old and brittle, the more you heat it, the better chance it's gonna have of breaking off. Uh, but if you're able to just get it off and have just adhesive left over, it might be easier because then you can come back through with Ulex and then knock it down. So there's no, yeah, there's no perfect way of doing this. It's a lot of work, hence why nobody wants to do it. Never again, ever in my life will I do this uh, voluntarily. This was a nightmare. Now, in terms of the method that we used, I was going into this thinking steam was going to be the only thing, and then that really wasn't the case because then we bust out the heat gun, and then there was a combination of the heat gun and steam, which was also something. We started this video four hours ago, so we're probably into this uh, removal a little over three and a half hours, and we used a handful of different people. So uh, what's going to happen from here is we're actually going to make a separate video comparing T and Ulex from Koch Chemi, which you can find in a separate video. But you're gonna see a few clips here of us removing this adhesive, and then before you know it, we're gonna be right back here with a nice, clean, and fresh bumper. So check that video out if you wanna see the full comparison. Until then, we have some adhesive to remove. guys so he's finished up with our application of kcx ulex and kcxt and this is close to our final result i don't think it's perfect by any means there's still some adhesive left here and there but our fingers are absolutely raw after removing all that ppf and then using those plastic scrapers we were done. Like this whole project, it needs to just be done. We're, we're completely over it at this point. Uh, way too long it's taken us to get here. But uh, if you want to watch the full video of the KCX Ulex versus T, I highly recommend checking that video out, mainly because I highlight a couple of the key differences between the two and what actually works best probably for this situation. So from here, we are left with one last thing to do, and that is to polish out this bumper. So I'm using the uh, Rupes HLR 75 Mini with a coarse blue wool pad and the last cut compound. We're gonna go through, knock everything down, then come back through the fine polish and finish it out. Now the goal here is just to see whether or not this bumper can actually be restored back to a somewhat decent shape and whether or not it was worth having PPF on after all these years. So 
Let's get to policy. All right guys, so we just finished up the polishing and we spritzed it down with a little bit of bead maker and this now is pretty much our final result. Um, is it perfect? No. After polishing, we actually revealed some more adhesive that kind of masked itself in. Once we hit it with a compound, we were like, oh no, there's more adhesive. And we're like, screw it. We've been at this for so many hours that we're just gonna be okay with it. So uh, in terms of the overall result, right? Uh, besides the adhesive, the actual paint still looks pretty good. I'm surprised at how durable these bumpers are. We were wrangling this thing back and forth and the paint still held up through the entire process. I would say the PPF did its job. I mean, it protected the paint itself. Now, did it protect it from indentions and rock impressions and things like that? No, not really. There is a ton of rock impressions, indentions, and things like that here on the bumper, where you kinda gotta ask yourself, right? If if the PPF is gonna be seeing that much abuse, is it worth having it PPF'd? Maybe, potentially. We just created almost two days worth of work for ourselves just to remove the old PPF, and it might just be cheaper to say, screw it, I'll respray the front bumper down the road. That might be an option as well. So, overall, I'm really happy with it, I'm just, I just wouldn't recommend doing this for fun. And if you have PPF that's been sitting on here for this long, just know you're getting into a ton of work. You might get lucky, you might not get lucky, uh, but yeah, it's a lot of work and hopefully this video is helpful showing you the struggles and showing you a couple tips that might make the process a little bit easier. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it entertaining. Hopefully you guys dig the results even though it's not perfect. But as usual, if you guys love these style videos and like seeing a struggle, please make sure to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more and stay tuned for more videos right here at The Rat Company.